entire defence. Portugal's victory was sweet for manager Jose Torres. He'd been a member of the Portugal team beaten by England in the 1966 semi-finals. Carlos Manuel scored the goal, which helped Portugal forget their internal problems, bickering over bonuses. Portugal's tactics still revolved around the system which had brought them to the European Championship semi-finals in 1984. They had successfully smothered England's attack now, but they weren't quite up to coping with Poland. The Poles had drawn their opening game against Morocco, and this victory assured them of a place in the second round. Vlodek Smolarek, a veteran of their 1982 World Cup lineup, shot beneath Vitor Damas, Portugal's reserve goalkeeper. Damas had been rushed into action after the first choice keeper, Manuel Bento, broke a leg in training. Morocco had taken goalless draws off Poland and England and faced Portugal in Guadalajara with every confidence that they were about to secure a place both at the top of the group and in the second round. That would make history. No African side had ever previously broken through the first round barrier. Kairi, their two-goal hero against Portugal, played for the army team FAR. They were reigning African club champions. Managing both club and country was a Brazilian, José Faria. His other goal-scoring sensation against Portugal was Crimo, a veteran forward who'd spent virtually all his career in France. Portugal could offer little by way of reply. Substitute Diamantino chipped in with one late goal. Portugal's fighting spirit had been washed away by Morocco and the rain, along with their prospects of World Cup progress. England and Poland had never met before 1966. Now their competitive paths were crossing all the time. England manager Bobby Robson had been forced to make changes. Ray Wilkins was suspended after being sent off against Morocco. Brian Robson had been injured in the same match. Trevor Stephen, Peter Reid, Peter Beardsley and Steve Hodge were brought into the starting lineup. They made a world of difference, especially to Gary Lineker. Inside 35 minutes, England were 3-0 up. All the goals had fallen to Lineker. The Everton marksman had been lined up for a summer transfer to Barcelona, and the Spanish club's spies must have been thrilled with his razor-sharp finishing. Poland were well beaten. Yet they too would join England in the second round. Monterey was a happy city that day for the fans of England and even Poland to say nothing of Lineker himself. Thanks to Gary Lineker's hat-trick against Poland, England recovered from their sticky start. The demoralising defeat by Portugal, who eventually finished bottom of the group, and the goalless draw against Morocco, in which Ray Wilkins received a red card. Only nine goals scored in the six matches. Morocco topped the group, and Poland, as well as England, went into the knockout phase. 16 countries in the second round of the 1986 World Cup. From now on, any slip could be fatal to the hopes of winning the competition. Argentina, in all blue here, met Uruguay in one of eight second-round ties all eagerly anticipated, with the prospect of a penalty shootout
if the scores were level after extra time. This is how the second round shaped up. Belgium against the Soviet Union, Brazil against Poland, Mexico versus Bulgaria, Argentina and Uruguay, England and Paraguay, France versus Italy, West Germany against Morocco, and Denmark against Spain. It couldn't have started in a more splendid fashion. Belgium and the Soviet Union produced a World Cup tie of classic dimension. It was staged in Leon, no one who saw it will ever forget it. On the face of it, it looked a stroll for the Soviets. They roared through their group matches while the Belgians struggled. They had been scoring almost at will while the Belgians had appeared barely willing to try a shot. In the Nuevo Campo Stadium in Leon, Belgium raised their game to match the Soviet Union for skill and endeavour. Igor Belanov had provided the Soviet Union with a first half lead, but in the second half, Belgium hit back. It was tit for tat football with Enzo Schifo equalising. A mistake in midfield by Kerlemans let Belgium down with 20 minutes to go. Belanov scored his second goal of this Mexican afternoon. Far from being downhearted, Belgium grew more determined. Kerlemans made up for his mistake by equalising 2-2. He looked suspiciously offside. The Swedish referee Erik Fredriksson had no doubts. The match ran on into extra time. At last, the Soviets began to pay a heavy price for their brilliant beginning to the tournament. Winning a World Cup requires a team to pace itself. The classic route to glory begins with a slow start. The Soviet team was not a machine. The clockwork was beginning to wind down. Extra time goals from Stefan de Mol and then Nico Klaassen lifted Belgium into the lead for the first time. At the other end, nine minutes remained when Belanov completed his hat-trick with a penalty. Goalkeeper Pfaff was furious, but not for long. Belgium had reached the quarter-finals. Back in 1938, these two nations had shared a remarkable match, Brazil winning a first-round World Cup tie 6-5. Almost against the run of play, Brazil went ahead here, Careca pulled down, and Socrates, off just two steps, converted the penalty. Poland had missed the boat. Brazil dominated the second half, looking better and better as they claimed three more superb goals. The samba drums went on beating late into the night. now but to attack and Brazil cut them to ribbons. Careca ran from the halfway line, timed his back heel to perfection and defender Edinho finished it off. 